Cheers, bro. Cheers, bro. <laughs> Was that excessive? <laughs> I was over right before, but now that we're kind of here, it's starting to feel a bit more real. Oh my god. Oh my god, this show. I want to know the budget for this show, one. And I don't get the casting and the matches. Oh my god, you can look, see that they're looking for drama because none of the couples make sense. Kara and Michael don't make sense. The fact that they decided to match. Piri Piri. I thought he was amazing until he started. And it's just like, oh my god, this is Ridge 2.0. I don't even know, I'm speechless, but hey. Anyway, hey there, thanks for stopping by, it's your girl Valerie. Welcome to my channel. If you're new here, don't forget to subscribe, click the like button, turn on the notification bell for when I upload new videos, share, and definitely uh, leave a comment. In this episode, I'll be reviewing the Married at First Sight New Zealand season four, episode two. To need someone to tell me what was the budget for this show really <laughs> what was the budget because i don't get it is it because it was cancelled before and then they sort of decided to bring it back make it make sense i don't get it uh okay they say the couples are being married on vanuatu island um and they have this man there who looks like he's <laughs> um i don't he was so slow in his pronunciation and enunciation of words and i don't know whether it's because the producers asked him to go slowly so that everybody would be, would be able to hear him um i don't get it um cara and michael obviously are the first couple to get married and cara wants someone who's about six two and so she got michael but michael comes with this facial hair and this deep breathing hyperventilating stuff that he does that he needed to do with his groomsmen before he got married and it's just like the, you're going to be a bit too much for her i think at first they'll get along but i think he's going to be borderline like i hope he doesn't become the jack of the season if you watched married at first sight australia you know who jack is and i hope if nothing else michael doesn't become that um obviously when they see kara's friend who's the bridesmaid they are happy because they could only bring one person and it's like oh, the budget must be very tight even the meal that they sat down to you could tell the budget was very tight i don't i doubt if it was more than ten thousand for all four couples but anyway um so the vows they're sweet they're sweet michael has so many cards apparently he's a poet he writes poetry and stuff and so he's you know he makes supplementary drinks and it's like oh my god is he trying to pitch his business or what anyway they at first sight Kara's friend is nervous because she says, you know, he, I, she doesn't think he'll be Kara's type. And we never get an answer to what Kara's type is. And if you've been on my channel for a long time, you know, I have a thing with people who go about on about, oh, you're not my type. Because if you have a type and if you know that you only want your type, then go home and find yourself your type. Don't waste our time coming on Married at First Sight saying you're open to getting to know anyone. And then once you're matched with someone, you start complaining that they're not your type. Michael is not going to be everybody's cup of tea, unfortunately. He's a bit, he's like Marmite. You either love him or you hate him. That's just my opinion about him. Um, They seem to get along. They love their vows. And I like the fact that Kara went and sat with her friend and said, it's just facial hair. He meets some of the other things that she asked for. She asked for someone about 6'2". Six, six he could lift her when they took their pictures. He seems to be very outgoing. So she likes that about him. So I like the fact that she's open-minded enough to look at the positives and not just focus on the negatives so i hope that works for for them obviously michael was feeling hyped about himself up until he found out that he wasn't kara's type and is now anxious because he doesn't know what kara's type is and for me i don't think her friend should have said that i really don't um michael's friend is happy he thinks they'll get along and it's like i think for day one they did very well they took them to their hotel room and there's this cake on the table and it's like seriously they've just had finger food so they've had fruits and some cold meats and now you're showing them eating the cake is that all that the wedding was so you had the man standing at the altar and then you had the bridesmaid and the groomsman and then now they had this one photographer who was taking pictures who could have easily been one of the crew who was taking the pictures. And then from there, they then set, set them at this buffet, well, at the table and sort of had a tray of cold cuts and a tray of, you know, fruit, a, a fruit salad, a, fr a fruit platter. And that's it. And now you're giving them a cake and it's like, mm, what's the budget for this show? 
what really is the budget for this show. I think Kara is finding him attractive. I think the more he speaks, because he said she might give him a kiss in bed, but she won't give him keys to the castle. And it's like, mm, it's a bit too early. And given how your dad wasn't on board with the show, I don't think he would be happy to hear that, you know, you're opening the castle on the first day. I'm a bit confused in regards to how they're matching these people, really. I'm, I'm a bit confused because they decide to match Steph with Perepe. And for me, it's like, one, he's younger than her. Um, two, he's a single father. Uh, will she be on board with that? Because it seems Steph is 31. She says she normally, she never goes past the second date because when things start getting intense she sort of goes off and you know goes on to the next person so she's at two dates and leave it girl girl and he is a single dad he's got two children uh it seems his children live in his local town so that's why he wants to stay there uh but then he's with his friends and it's his friends sort of imply that he still likes you know to have a good time he still likes to it seems he still likes to have guys night and do all that and it's like well this doesn't sound like a good look, really, because you're matching him with someone who's saying that she's at an age whereby, she, one, she's got trust issues, two, she's at an age whereby she wants to start a family because, you know, everybody else in her family is settling down. She seems to have been grieving her grandma and the fact that her grandma didn't get to meet her, her, her children. So this, I think should be better suited with someone who is more stable and someone who's seriously in it for the long haul someone who's seriously in it who's sort of had their time sort of um enjoying life had their time sort of you know playing the field and is now ready to settle down and with Piripi it seems like although he's a single dad he still wants to have a bit of fun and so I don't know how that's going to play out given the fact that um Stephanie's got trust issues it's going to be challenging because if he's out with his mates most of the time and Will Steph be on board with that, given that she's got trust issues? Will she be able to understand that? So I don't know. I am anxious about them as a couple, but maybe they'll maybe they'll convince me. Maybe they'll convince me. I'll see how it plays out. But then at the end of the day, if you look at the two other girls left, I guess Steph would have been his best match because um, I think she sort of has the emotional intelligence to some extent to sort of cope with him and sort of help navigate that relationship. Um, you have Kara and Michael, they're happy, you know, it's the day after the wedding and they're having, you know, their coffee's in bed, then they go uh, kickboxing just for, for fun of it. It's just between the two of them. And it's like, this production is really trying to cut corners at all costs. You wouldn't expect a couple the day after they've got married to go exercising the next day, but it seems Kara enjoyed it. That's all that matters. Hey. Someone in Mouse is so wrong. It's so wrong, so wrong, so wrong. So you have Piripi with his friend sitting down having a drink, and the producer is taken aback when he sort of, you know, kicks back and he's just downing this uh, bottle of alcohol. And she's like, oh my God. And then he had to stop and he said, is that too much? And, and he could see that, oh my God. And it's like, if that's what he does on camera, I can only what, imagine what he does on a boy's night. Although he says he's a mama's boy, he wants someone who will get along with his mom, someone who his mom will like, someone. And so uh, I don't know. I really don't know because his wife to be seems like a very emotional person. She's talking about her family, how she misses her family, how she wishes her family would be there for her wedding. But obviously they've been restricted so she could only bring her sister. Um, And so... I am anxious. And the fact that they had the audacity to show him and his matey taking a lake. It's like, seriously, why are we doing this? Why are we doing this? This doesn't need to be on camera. When I first saw him, I thought he was very calm, very sort of decent and very well-mannered. And now that I'm seeing this at the side of Piripi, I don't know. It makes me anxious. It really makes me anxious given the, the, the more we find out about Steph, the fact that she, her parents were divorced when she was 11 and he's a divorced dad. And so if he's 28 now, you can only imagine he got married very young. And so if he's behaving this way, how will she take that on board? She's already got trust issues and it's like this is a recipe for 
natural disaster. I am yet to see a couple that I think is likely to be ideal for one another. And it makes me very anxious that if these are the people that they've matched thus far, who's going to be matched with the other two guys? Uh, who's going to be whose bride? And so... <sighs> It makes me very anxious because then I start to wonder, out of James and Nathaniel, who's drawn the short straw and is being matched with Madeline? Because Madeline seems like, you know, she's out of the box as well. And Samantha, I don't know. I can't wait to see the wedding, though. I can't wait to see what happens with their first impression of one another, especially with uh, Steph and Pirip. I didn't want to say it, but am I the only one who's getting rich vibes from Pirip? It's just he doesn't say inappropriate stuff like rage from marriage at first sight australia but his behavior i was actually taken aback i loved his vows they were very emotional i was surprised because i didn't expect that given the fact that he was chugging his beer and he was peeing alongside the road and then you know to hear him have these emotional vows and i also loved steph's vows they were actually very emotional and i actually saw some chemistry and i was thinking oh my god they're going to be amazing but the revelation about the fact that he's got two kids was something shocking for steph yeah they're four and two it makes sense if he's 28 it would be shocking if you had an eight-year-old and you're like wow but also at the same time it seems their mom the mom of these children is the same person and so if he's gone back twice and had kids uh steph is right to question the relationship is is right to question the age of the children and the relationship with the mother between piripa and the mother to see is it still something that's ongoing or is it over or is there any idea as to whether she knows that he's decided to move on and marry someone else um i don't know i it, it, it's concerning to me it's concerning to me i don't think it's concerning that he has children but it's concerning that he has children yeah i I guess on the other hand, it's better he have children with the same person than he have children with two different women. Because then you wonder that, is he someone who just goes around sleeping with anything in a skirt? But then also, I like the fact that he spoke positively about the mother of his children. Um, He says he hasn't introduced anyone to his children that he's dated, which is good, which shows that he, ha he is responsible to some extent. So Steph and her sister had a chat and the sister was like, yeah, there will need to be a discussion about the children and the children's mom because you know it is concerning that is he still in a relationship with her or is there still anything going there and i would have the same question i would have the same question because the youngest child is still too young the youngest child is only two years old so i would want to know when were you last intimate with this woman and what is the relationship with the mother of your children are you friends with benefits are you just friends how were you dating and you broke up what is it and why did you not marry her again that would be a question that i would want to know um and while they're having a conversation they come back to find piripa and his friend peeing and it's like oh my god do they have a, a uti or something why do they keep running to the bushes to pee and why do the producers keep filming them I don't like that. I really don't like that. And it felt very uncomfortable because Steph and her sister didn't know what to do. And the guys couldn't stop because they were still <laughs> midstream. So they had to keep going until they finished. And it's just like, oh my God, this is chaos. It's interesting. I think the budget on this show was really very low. I think because they were not sure whether people were going to watch it. So they didn't want to go all out. Because they then sent Kara and Michael on this horse ride. And Kara is talking about the fact that she's got this PTSD from a ch an incident that happened when she was a child when a horse just ran off with her. So she's afraid of horses. And the fact that they encouraged her to continue with it doesn't make sense. They could have sent them, you know, on a boat ride because the sun was out. They could have sent them on one of those. What did they call those little things where you're sort of paddling with your feet? Those little rafty, floaty things. Anything else but the, the horse ride. But she seemed to do very well. And I'm really proud of her. They did go into the sea and they were making out. And it's like Michael is really trying to be on his best behavior. I guess he really likes Kara. So I can't wait for that. And poor Nathaniel. I need someone to explain to me why. Why did they think Nathaniel was the best candidate to be straddled with this woman, with Madeline? I don't think that's it. I think he's too sweet a guy for her. I think she's going to railroad him. She's going to run over him. And the fact that his dad, his dad was a bit intense as well. His dad was a bit intense because apparently Nathaniel 
grew, his mom came to from Nigeria to New Zealand and met this guy, fell in love, had a child, but the relationship didn't work out. So she went back to, to Nigeria with Nathaniel. And then at 17, she sent him back to his dad to say, it's time for you to go and get to know your dad. So um, he is really looking forward to this because he wants a family. And it's like, poor thing is only 30 years old and you're matching him with someone who's 37. Make that make sense. That math ain't mathing. The dad, the fact that he had the audacity <laughs> to embarrass poor Nathaniel and try and teach him about sex and how to make love to a woman on TV doesn't make sense to me. But then you also have Madeline. She's ecstatic. You know, she's this Reiki healer who manages pet shops. And so for me, I think they should have matched her with Michael. I, I know that would have been an, a very intense couple, but I think it would have made more sense than for them to try and match her with Nathaniel. Nathaniel is one of the sweetest guys, and I don't know why he drew the short straw, why they felt that, you know, he is ideal to marry her. And so I can't wait to see what happens with the two of them. Um, I I am anxious as I've said, that she is a bit too intense. Yes, she was there with her mom and I was thinking, oh my God, her mom plus his dad is going to be a nightmare. It's going to be a nightmare. I hope it doesn't turn out that they've already slept together <laughs> since the dad says he's got nine children and he seems to have been a man of the world. He seems to have been Papa was a rolling stone. But anyway, my singing is terrible. Um, it was a great episode. Uh, a bit slow, a bit slow. I think things will start to move on once everybody's married as it normally does on marriage at first sight so i can't wait thanks guys for watching please don't forget to like share comment and subscribe and click the link in my video to watch my review from episode one bye guys